We are now in the Opel Ambera E. Yes, this is the car that we took the race from Oslo to Trondheim and back again. Uh, but you know what? today I'm going to test um, range at 90 km per hour and 120 km per hour. It was requested by my followers. And you know what? I also want to know how efficient this car is compared to, for example, Kona. Because, yes, I tried to compare this with Kona many times now because it's similar size car, similar size battery. Okay, this one is more expensive. But yeah, so you know, it's a fair comparison. So let's just do it um, now. Um, yeah, we are at uh, Nebenes, so we're going to drive this usual stretch north and then turn back again. And uh, because we have to do, uh, you know, a to B back to A because then we will eliminate um, wind advantage and elevation advantage. So other people who they test something, you know, you can't just test it on a random stretch. You might be getting some elevation advantage or wind or whatever. So you might get too high consumption or too low consumption. But at least this one would be, I would try to be as correct as possible. And also, uh, I also have to look at the, the GPS speed when I do the 90 kilometers per hour and 120 kilometers per hour. Yeah, so let's get going. We have been driving for about 10 minutes and uh, so far we see the consumption is similar to Kona. Kona averaged 130 but it's still too early. Uh, we still have to go back to the starting point. So um, you know what, since I have some time today, I will drive uh, some distance before I turn back. Uh, so then we get a more like accurate result. Alright, you know what, let's just turn around over there, yeah. This is uh, 23.7, so that will be almost 50 kilometers, uh, so 30 miles, so that's good enough sample to get an indication. But so far, uh, 134, ooh, nice. Yeah, temperature outside is uh, 25 degrees Celsius, dry, no sun today, so good conditions. Whoa, so... Uh, Way back now we have some uh, headwind and also some elevation change but uphill so uh, the consumption was 130 on the way down but now we has gone up to 145 so of course you could just say that you can test one direction and say ah yes this is good I have 130 yeah and very is as good as uh, Kona or you can go A to B and back to A and get a more correct reading Alrighty then, we are here again by uh, Nebenes Kruer, yes, uh, and uh, the consumption was 144, almost 50 kilometers distance driven. Hmm, so that means that um, at these speeds, 94, I mean 90 kilometers per hour, um, and para E will consume 10% more than Kona, yeah. So. I don't know, uh, that day when I tested Kona, I mean, it was similar day, it was fairly hot-ish. Yeah, in Norway, it's like 25 degrees Celsius is, is considered hot in Norway. <laughs> yes, man, is hot. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure that, you know, uh, Kona is more efficient than uh, Ampere E. I mean, some of your Ampere E lovers going to be like, wah, wah, wah. he rigged the uh, Tesla Bjorn, he's a, he's a Hyundai lover, so he's a Hyundai fanboy, so he rigged the test, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know, but anyway, let's try the 120 kilometers per hour, the so-called high-speed test, yeah. And then all the Germans gonna be like, nine, that is not high-speed, high-speed is 180 kilometers per hour. <sighs> okay, Germans, you win, your, your roads kick ass for the Lord, all right? Let me do my high-speed test in Norway then. I'm driving barely legal, driving at 120, you know? just started driving and immediately you see that the consumption is 240 that is crazy you know that is the same consumption as Model X so we can conclude that uh, an Ampere E consumes as much as a Tesla Model X no I'm just kidding I'm just trolling because you know what right now <clears throat> the car has potential energy I mean it has kin kinetic energy stored in the car because it needed to accelerate up to this speed so that's why you get a spike in the beginning of the drive. So you will always get this regardless of if it's an Ionic or a Tesla or I-Pace or a fossil car. Um, so that's why I have to do a proper long stretch. Um, and then you will see the true uh, consumption. Yeah, I'm barely driving. 
driving faster than that Mitsubishi. Was that a plug-in hybrid? No, it's just a regular one. But oh yeah. So um, you see already now it starts dropping. Uh, it will drop some more. Uh, so we just have to keep driving. Yeah. So um, just gonna keep driving here. Um, nice weather today. So uh, I guess well, I could do the same. Stretch, right? Yeah. Let's, let's do the same stretch. Um, the 50 kilometer stretch, yeah. Uh, not too much traffic today, so I'm um, just gonna cruise here on E6 North. So, um, hmm, should I go away my car? No, I'm gonna do that off road. Nah, it doesn't matter, it's not too important to weigh the car. Yeah. And, uh, let me just uh, overtake that next car. Like 500 more kilometers, 500 uh, meters until I reach the Volvo over there. Yeah, that's fine. I just, you know, you know, you know that I am Norwegian. Do you know? You can you can see it on the road if I'm Norwegian or not. You know why? Because I'm driving on the left lane <laughs> for no reason, just hugging the left lane for hours. Hours and hours and hours and if there are some cars coming from behind I'll be like what I'm already doing you know uh, faster I'm already going faster at the speed limit here so I'm not gonna let you pass you can pass on the right side yes how about that <laughs> see the Volvo now he got he wanted to overtake but he was like ah oh, she there this this slow poke passing him yeah all right let's see so we get what uh, the wind sock is a bit uh, it's a bit hanging there, yeah. So there's a slight tailwind on the way there, and then we get some headwind on the way back. Oh yes. Oh, let's see. Yeah, just let's just cruise on the left lane here until we have to turn around. Yeah, how about that? And now we are going back to the future. <laughs> uh, going back to the Yes, and uh, I don't know why, but the consumption. But, oh, bumpy, bumpy. Uh, uh, uh. 211. Okay, yeah. So you see, I had to cruise 124 to match 120 on GPS. Yeah. So uh, this was much faster than um, the 90 kilometers per hour run. So we'll be back there in no time. Ah, shit. Okay. So there's a little bit of rain here. At least the road is mostly dry. Well, it's like moist, damped. Uh, so this will. Uh, uh, consumption by a little bit. All right, we are now back at the Nebedes, and the consumption was 209. Actually, I think it was 208 when I just left. Uh, well, you see that the problem is that this one counts when you are parked. Uh, the car is in what? The park? The park. Okay. So it still counts in park, but all right. Uh, anyway, so 200. Let's say around 210 then. Um, we don't know how much that rain uh, added, but it was only for a short stretch. Most of the 50 kilometers uh, stretch didn't have any rain or schmutz or whatever. So um, 210 versus 190 on Kona is also 10% uh, higher, so uh, not too shabby. But anyway, let's calculate some range here. So I know that um, this is a 60 kilowatt hour pack and uh, I think I measured about 58 well, hold on, hold on. Let, me, let, me, let me put something there. You're gonna be like, oh no, crutch, crutch, not safe for for children to watch. Okay, okay, better. Um, so if we assume uh, 58 kilowatt hour available, right? And then let's say we have two kilowatt hour on the bottom, like a margin. So we can use 56 uh, kilowatt hours, all right? And then divided by in the 90 kilometers per hour test, um, it will be 144. So you have ooh, about 390 kilometers of range, like highway range, not too bad. And then um, 56,000, no, 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 shh. There, okay. Divided by uh, about 210 on the on the fast-ish stretch of the motorway range, okay. Motorway range is like 260, 270 kilometers. Hmm, so of course it's it's less than Kona because Kona is more efficient and Kona has more uh, a slightly bigger battery, but still um, It's better than uh, most other cars in this class 
So there you have it, the Opel Ampera E. It is a dying race because well, I haven't paid too much attention what is going on with the PSA and all the stuff in Europe about the Ampera E, but apparently not many people are receiving the car. There, there have been some, some people have been waiting forever, like two, three years for that car. So hopefully that won't happen with the Kona or the other cars that are coming, like I-Pace. Well, I-Pace is getting close. Um, but uh, at least, you know, I measured the, the cargo space in here and it is better than Kona. Uh, this one could swallow, uh, well, I, that's what she said. Um, but this one could swallow 18 uh, boxes of banana. 18. <laughs> 18. 18 boxes, whereas uh, Kona could only take um, 16. So, I mean, I knew that Kona was pretty small, you know, so in a way, you know, Kona and Ampera E are like rivals um, in, in a way, but um, yeah, but as of, as of delivery, we don't know. So, I mean, if you want a good EV with good range, with active cooling, uh, you cannot get the 40 kilowatt hour leaf. You might have to wait for the, the 60 kilowatt hour leaf. But see, we've seen in the news that uh, there is some leak, leaked footage that, um, well, it was, uh, it was um, uh, a picture that um, the new 60 kilowatt hour leaf charged at a whooping 102 kilowatt. That is even more than Kona. Kona so far, we have been only getting um, 70 kilowatt, but we don't know yet where the limitation is. It could be in the car or it could be uh, in the charging plug at the charging station because it actually requires a CCS2 standard plug. The CCS1 only supports up to 100 kilowatt. So um, you know, the last thing I'm gonna do now uh, with this car is to charge it on the 175 kilowatt um, charging station. And um, according to the spec, it doesn't support more than 50 kilowatt. But I've seen screenshots, or I've seen pictures of people getting 57 kilowatt on the 100 kilowatt charger. So let's see what happens. I hope I don't blow up the car. <laughs> but anyway, that was the consumption range test. So hope you guys enjoy this. And as always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.